What's up guys, Archangel Monkey here and this is my Sustain the Industry Christmas haul for the month of December. Obviously December because uh, Christmas only happens in December, right? So yeah, um, I've got loads of uh, anime and manga this month. Uh, quite a lot of anime but mostly manga um, because I've been kind of playing catch up on series uh, that I've bought previously and uh, been trying to basically fill in a few gaps here and there. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I'll start with the anime, first anime I got this month, um, I'll start with the Blu-rays actually, it was uh, Skycrawlers, let me just focus it there, there we go, um, yeah, Skycrawlers, uh, watch this, really good, um, Bright Production IG, um, I got this really cheap, I got it for like a fiver, and I wasn't really expecting much of it, but it was actually really good, um, mixed reviews, uh, I might do a review on it myself, but yeah, Skycrawlers. Next thing I got this month, uh, a film I've been highly anticipated for a long time. Summer Wars by um, the guy who did uh, Girl Who Let Who Time, box in there. Um, I'm wanting to pick up the manga for this as well. Um, the manga's been released by Vertical. Uh, watched this already and it's absolutely fantastic. Much better than I expected and much better than I'd hoped. Um, yeah, Summer Wars. Next Blu-ray, and uh, this is a complete, well, series. If you've seen my review on this, then you know I got this already, but I got this this month, so I might as well include it. And that is Eden of the East. Um, the complete, well, the complete series, but obviously there's two movies that come with it, uh, so I need to get them. Um, but yeah, really good, really good. Uh, the final Blu-ray, which I've got, um, is uh, Wolf Children, um, Momoro Hosoda. I believe is the same guy who did uh, The Girl Who Left Through Time uh, and Summer Wars, yeah. Um, this is the collector's edition, so it comes with like a, a nice um, slipcover box, which is pretty cool. That's my receipt. Um, so it's like a DVD, Blu-ray uh, combo pack. Um, it comes with some like postcards on here, uh, which I haven't opened yet. Um, that's a DVD, no, that's the Blu-ray, DVD, and then like an extra disc with uh, like extras. I believe there's some like audio commentaries and things like that, um, which I'm really looking forward to watching. Um, I've heard beautiful things about this. Well, I've heard that it is beautiful, should I say. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing I'm looking forward to, um, Wolf Children. I believe this was just recently released. Um, I know it's from 2012, so I think the UK release is like really recent. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, now on to the DVDs. First thing I got, uh, this is a classic. Um, I remember playing a little PS3 game for this, um, and that is uh, Voltron. Uh, Defenders of the Universe. Uh, this is like a steel book. Um, I think it comes with about 12 or 13 episodes or something like that. It's only in the English dub though, uh, and the English dub is absolutely terrible. Uh, when I say terrible, it's not unwatchable, it's just really, really funny because the, the voices are just so different to like the characters that they're playing. Um, never really had much experience with the Voltron uh, franchise. I know it's a really classic anime and that's why I got it. But yeah, Voltron, Defenders of the Universe. Um, next thing I got was uh, Tokyo Godfathers. Uh, I'm a really big Satoshi Kon um, fan. Ever since I watched uh, Paprika, um, I've always been on the lookout for uh, um, his films. It uh, doesn't really come with anything except for the film. Um, so yeah, Tokyo Godfathers. Uh, I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible because I don't want it to be like another 40 minute um, whole video like it was last time. Um, this is something I've been highly anticipating watching for years. And that is Elfin Lead. Um, which is the uh, complete uh, collection. Comes with a really nice slipcase with uh, um, like an open up sort of flap on it. Um, contains all 13 episodes and it comes with a bonus poster which I have not put up on my wall yet. Um, comes with all the discs. Uh, let me see if I can open up the poster and show you guys real quick. Um, I haven't started watching this yet. Well, in fact, I've seen the first episode uh, and it's pretty cool. You can't really see it. Um, yeah. Pretty cool poster, um, it's like A3 size, double sided, um, yeah. Um, I'm not going to put it up on my wall yet because I want to buy a frame for it. Um, so, you know, as I want to watch it, it's around the time when I will be putting it up on my wall. But yeah, Elf and Lead. Um, next thing I got, um, this is something I've been kind of holding back on um, until the price kind of dropped. Uh, that is One Piece Collection 3, um, Nami on the front cover there, also on the back. Um, this goes up to uh, episodes 
78 just before they get to the snow islands and the meat chopper um, so yeah this basically this basically covers all the action on little garden when they get into the grand line like the start of the baroque works arc got some filler in here as well um, I, I can't remember what the filler was actually um, oh yeah the the dragon island um, probably one of the worst fillers in one piece in my opinion um, so I'm kind of I watched it non nonetheless but it kind of doesn't zip through it um, next thing I got I was extremely lucky to get this um, got this directly from MVM Entertainment and that is the second box set for Eureka 7 um, out of print I got it brand new uh, for £20 um, it contains episodes 26 to 50 um, beautiful disc um, disc art really nice and shiny um, I'm very happy to get this uh, so I can watch the entire series now without worrying about um, not knowing or understanding the film as and when I watch that as well um, next thing I got was the complete series of Gantz uh, this is basically I, I watched this before reading the manga um, I've only got up to volume 6 of the manga so I believe this goes past volume 6 and then like ends on a filler uh, because it never continued, um, basically, um, you know, animating it, um, just basically carried on in the manga, kind of like what they did with Claymore, and, you know, other series and stuff like that. Um, I wish they'd have basically carried it on, um, but no more. Next thing I got was uh, Phantom, Requiem for the Phantom. Um, I already have this, uh, the first 13 episodes, um, what Walking Zero Zero Dead sent me, but this is the um, the English release, the UK release, that has uh, all 26 episodes on it, I believe. Um, yeah, just so I can watch the whole thing. Um, I'll, I'll end up watching the first 13 episodes on the discs that, um, that Dead got me, so I won't be watching all of them discs. And uh, last for the anime this month, probably the best thing I got this month um, in terms of anime was the uh, Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. Um, art box, I guess you could say. Um, it's like a nice chipboard, similar to my Black Lagoon one. Uh, contains seven discs of the first gig. Um, I'm gonna get the second gig also in this, you know, the nice chipboard. It comes with a nice little booklet um, with like information and things like that. We've got like all the discs, uh, volume seven. Oh, I'm going backwards here, but never mind. Volume six, volume five, volume four. Volume 3, Volume 2, and Volume 1. Oh, hello Shadow. Alright, now onto the manga. Um, but before I start that actually, um, I just want to show like an uh, alternative DVD pickup, um, kind of anime and manga unrelated, uh, and that was uh, Monty Python's The Life of Brian, um, kind of like a satirical look at um, the life of one man um, around the time when uh, Jesus was alive. Uh, absolutely hilarious, I love Monty Python. Um, yeah, check out Life of Brian if you haven't already, it's funny. Right, now for the manga. Um, first off I'm just going to show you like uh, miscellaneous pickups um, manga that I've basically bought to fill in gaps or catch up the series. Uh, first thing I got was um, the Kurosagi Cops Delivery Service Volume 12. Um, I haven't even opened it out of its shrink wrap yet. Um, I'm, I'm still to catch up with uh, Kurosagi Cops Delivery Service. Uh, I'm only still on volume 5 but I'll probably end up just rereading the whole series, uh, that was that. Okay, next thing we got was uh, Hunter x Hunter volume 6. Um, just read up to volume 5 so there's a few more that I need to get to fill in some gaps. Uh, I also got volume 7. Uh, volume 5, oh I still got the receipt in there for some reason. Uh, volume 5 uh, was where it kind of started getting interesting for me. Um, start going hunting which is pretty cool. Uh, next thing I got was uh, Margie The Labyrinth of Magic Volume 3 which is the latest volume out. Um, a big step up from the second volume in my opinion. Uh, yeah really good. Next uh, I got is uh, a gem every time it comes out for me and that was One Piece Volume 69. Um, this is Coming up to the end, nearly of uh, Punk Hazard, the next volume will kind of like wrap things up on Punk Hazard, and they'll go off to the next destination, wherever that may be. Uh, quite a thick volume as well, which is a nice treat. Um, Oda likes to treat his fans. Um, everyone said, "Wow, a nice thick volume." Next thing I got was uh, Ralgrad, Volume Two. I'm still in its shrink wrap. I'm still to read it. Um, apparently, there's a, a bonus sticker inside. Um, 
to get this one into focus. Yeah, bonus sticker inside, and I can also win a trip to Japan. So who knows? Maybe next time you see me, guys, I'll be in Japan, uh, or not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, next thing I got was um, probably a, this was a big disappointment for me. Um, oops, spilling manga all over the place. Ugh. Um, Naruto Volume Sixty Three. Um, the big reveal. Very controversial volume. Um, Toby, as you can see there, is revealed. Um, you know, we now we now know who he is, and he was just meh. Yeah, Naruto. Uh, next, I got a few patch up volumes. Um, this is something I've been kind of uh, stalling on. Um, that's Attack on Titan. Uh, watched all of the anime, uh, so I wasn't really in a big rush to pick up these volumes because I'd already basically knew what happened. Um, so volume 6, the female titan. Uh, next got, um, yeah, Attack on Titan volume 7, volume 8. This is kind of like where the anime uh, finishes off the battle in Stoa's district, I believe it was called, whoops, in the anime. Dropping manga all over the place. Um, yeah, and finally the latest volume out is completely new material for me, uh, volume 9, with that like Beast Titan or whatever you call him, Gorilla Titan or Hairy Titan, <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah, volume 9, brilliant volume, um, this is new material. Uh, so that's all that's up to date with that. Um, next, um, I got the latest volume of A Bride Story by Karu Mori. Let's get this into focus, there we go. Um, volume 5. You know, beautiful hardcovers, Yen, Pre Yen Press are doing this series, you know, justice, you know, like it deserves. Um, yeah, bright story, can't go wrong with that. Uh, I also got um, a volume I was missing from my Blade of the Immortal collection, uh, volume 22, uh, Footsteps. Um, I'm only on volume 6 of Blade of the Immortal, and so far it's pretty good. Um, nothing too special, I don't really see what the whole hype is about as of yet, but I hear it's supposed to get a lot better. Um, next... I've got some very rare manga. Um, these are some old, old prints of uh, Strain by Bu Ronson, the guy who did um, uh, Fist of the North Star. So this is volume four. Uh, it's a five volume series. I haven't started reading yet because I want all the volumes before I start reading it. And volume two. I had volume one and three already, um, so I needed these ones. They're pretty old, but they're in very good condition. Uh, next. I got uh, completely up to date, I believe, with uh, Appleseed, Volume 3, uh, which is uh, the Scales of Prometheus, as uh, the title of this volume is called, yeah. And the, it's in relatively good condition, uh, I wish it could have been in better condition, but Volume 4 was in a lot better condition. Um, you know, I bought this brand new, uh, Volume 3 came and it was in, you know, a few little scuffs on the spine, I was a little bit disappointed, um, but yeah, Volume 4. Uh, there's also an Appleseed ID um, book that comes with it. I'm not really sure what that is in correlation to the actual story, whether it's just like a data book or if it's like an extra sort of thing afterwards. But yeah, next thing, Vagabond, Volume 10. I am one viz big away from being completely caught up with Vagabond. There's a uh, Hozoin Inchun, not Inchun, uh, Hozoin Ine, Inchun's master, on the uh, spine there. Um, Takawan on the... Uh, the back and Mimoto Masashi and um, Otsu on the front. This is after the fight with the Yoshioka. Um, I won't spoil anything for anybody who doesn't know. Um, but yeah, volume 10, excellent, excellent volume. Very happy with this. Uh, can't wait to get volume 11. I'll probably get that next month after New Year's because I'm all pretty much stocked up now for manga for the new year. Uh, next was a series that started, which is a new series, um, that's, well, not a new series, it's an old series, a classic series, uh, Lady Snowblood. Um, this, I believe, was the inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill film series. Um, you know, it's kind of like Lady Vengeance, sort of, um, yeah, female samurai. Uh, next uh, is another classic series, which I've been highly anticipating for some years now, and that is Crying Freeman by... Uh, uh, I, think, I think it was written by Kazuo Koike, the guy who did uh, Long Wolf on Cub, and um, the artist is uh, Ryoichi Ikegami, who was the artist in Strain, which I just previously shown you. So yeah, Volume 1. Uh, please don't run out of space. Volume 2, which is still in its cellophane wrapping. Um, you can just see how much, just how much 
time and effort goes into the artwork. Gorgeous artwork. Um, volume 3. I'm not sure when this came out. I'm not sure if it's like a Gekiga era manga. Um, I think it's a little bit after the Gekiga era. Maybe during it. I think it's like 1980s. I believe that's still part of the Gekiga era. Late Gekiga maybe. Um, and volume 4. Um, I was going to get volume 5 which is the last volume. But uh, I decided to pick up something else instead because I'm not in a particular rush to read this yet because I've still got a huge backlog of things to read. Yeah. Uh, next thing I've got. Um, uh, this is a series that kind of caught my intrigue because it's like a slice of life, um, kind of uh, set in like a manga shop. Uh, Kingyo used books. Um, uh, the Viz title, Viz signature site title. Um, I don't know what this series is totally about. I'm not. If, I'm not sure if it's like a. A series of vignettes or short stories or I'm not really too sure but I know it's set in like a manga shop in Japan um, and that's you know that's pretty cool. Uh, next something that everybody's been going on about so I thought right I finally just decide to pick it up even though it might not be my cup of tea but that is Flowers of Evil. Um, I've seen a few episodes of the anime and I actually really liked it. I liked the rotoscoping that was used um, for that reason, you know, it got a lot of slack from a lot of the fans for saying it didn't really stay faithful, you know, artistically to the actual manga. Um, I will kind of judge that for myself as I'm when I read this. I'm actually looking forward to it because, you know, it's, it's heavily hyped up. Um, and any time a series gets kind of hyped up, you know, it kind of gets me hyped up to read it. So, yeah, uh, Volume 2. Volume 3. Um, also... Volume four, and I kind of like what they do with the uh, the covers. Uh, Vertical do this thing where, like, for every three volumes, they like change the color, um, the color scheme, and like there's the book design. Like, you can see like there's a like a matte and a gloss finish um, on this uh, cover. I don't know if it shows up in the light, but yeah, I kind of like that. What Vertical do with it? I don't know if it's like that with the original Japanese releases. Um, anyway, next, uh, a manga author who you know I think is very underrated, uh, Inio Sano's Solanin. Um, uh, I read What a Wonderful World by him and loved it and this is like another sort of slice of life um, very thick, it's like two volumes in one um, standard size with the big signatures uh, yeah, can't wait to get rid um, reading that Whew. right, next what I'm currently reading and a few volumes that I've picked up just to get ahead was uh, Bunny Drop by uh, Yumi Unita um, this series is absolutely brilliant this is volume 2 uh, no, Volume 3, sorry. Um, I've already read Volume 2. Um, in fact, I'm doing it in the wrong order. But anyway, Volume 3, uh, which is what I'm currently on. This one is Volume 2. Um, yeah, uh, Slice of Life. This is actually unknown. I never realised, but this is actually a Jose manga, which is aimed at older women. Um, I thought I didn't actually own any Jose manga, but apparently this is a Jose manga. Um, and it's just beautifully written, just about uh, Aman Daikichi raising... Um, uh, his granddad's illegitimate child, Rin, as you can see on the cover there. Um, just a really heartwarming tale. Um, I'll probably end up doing a review on this, like a first impressions review, uh, once I get a little bit further into it, but I've heard that the ending is a little bit, you know, not on par with the beginning and things like that, so, you know, it's only 10 volumes long, so I'll see you pretty soon. Next thing I got was um, Volume 4 of Biomega. Um, I've had Volume 3, 1 to 3 of Biomega for like over a year, um, so I thought. You know, I might as well finish the series off, um, reread it, thing like that. You know, I haven't taken the sticker off this obviously because I haven't started reading it. Um, I'll probably get around to that soon, volume five. So I only have one more volume to get of Biomega before that's complete. Next thing I got was the latest volume of Ikigami, volume nine. Um, I was actually quite shocked to learn that um, it's actually finished in Japan. Um, there's only 10 volumes, so this is actually the penultimate volume. It does not feel like a penultimate volume at all because it still feels like there's a lot more for the story to give. But yeah, anyway, volume 9 of Ikigami, which is brilliant. Um, next thing I got was uh, another Jose manga, um, Pink by Kyoko Oku um, Okazaki. Um, I need to pick up Helter Skelter, which was uh, the first release work, um, I believe, Vertical released um, before this. Anyway, I bought this basically because um, a fellow, uh, well, a newer YouTuber um, called Count Mecca um, basically did like a review on this um, and it just sounded really interesting so I thought I'll pick it up straight away. Um, it's got like a pet crocodile with like sunglasses, which is pretty cool. Um, I was just, yeah, I'm to, still to read this, but yeah, that's pretty cool. 
Next thing I got was a series that I've been meaning to buy for ages. Um, this is actually uh, a very unusual series, in, you know, in terms that the author is, isn't actually Japanese. Uh, he's American, but he lives in Japan. Um, and that is Pipo Chu, uh, Volume 1 by uh, Felipe Smith. Um, obviously, he's got a very Western name. He's actually American, um, but he works and lives in Japan. Um, this, this work was actually published in a Japanese magazine. Which is, uh, you know, very rare um, for anybody outside of Japan to get published, um, to get their work or manga published in Japan. But yeah, uh, don't let the cover uh, spoil you. You know, don't don't let it ruin you. Sort of, you know, interest in buying this. It's actually really really good. Um, re highly recommend it to anybody. Uh, next thing I got was um, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam: The Origin uh, Volume Three, Ramble Roll. Uh, a thicker volume this time. Um, it's a little bit thicker than the second one. Um, I thought this was actually the latest volume, but there's actually another volume that's just come out like last week, volume four. So I'm gonna pick that up pretty soon. Um, but yeah, as uh, with the Mobile Suit Gundam releases that Vertical are pushing out, you know, absolutely beautiful book design. Um, you know, everything's so good about it. Uh, I love the cover. Um, I think that's Shah Zaku on the front there. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, next thing I got was. Uh, Samu Tezuka's Triton of the Sea, Volume 1. Um, this is by a Platinum manga. Let me just get this into focus. Um, quite a few of their stuff are uh, funded by like Kickstarter, as you can see there. Like uh, Same with like Unico. And I think there's another one as well. So these are basically uh, limited prints. Um, or I, that's, that would be my guess anyway. So I tried to pick them up as uh, quickly as I can before they uh, go out of print. Uh, Unico, I believe, is already slowly going out of print, but it's still uh, available at retail price. I'm going to pick that up soon. Um, yeah, try to live the sea volume one. Um, I kind of went on a t Tezuka binge um, at this point, so I got Princess Knight volume one. Um, I'm going to pick up uh, Twin Knights as well. Um, Vertical do a really good job at releasing Tezuka's work, um, really beautiful book designs and things like that. Uh, I believe this is a shoujo manga. Um, so yeah, um, I just picked up volume 2, so this is now complete, this is all of Princess Knight, um, if you're not including uh, Twin Knights, but I believe you can read Twin Knights without needing to read Princess Knight, um, because they're kind of separate stories, but, you know, tying with each other all the same. Uh, right, last pile, last four things, um, I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible because I don't want it to be too long, uh, but it might end up being long anyway. Uh, first thing, well, the, one of the last things I need to show you is, it's not even fitting on there, it's too big. Um, a Zoo in Winter by Jiro Taniguchi. Um, I picked this up because it's been in my wish list for a while and I noticed it was going out of print and it's in hardback. I need, I, I love my hardback so much. Um, but yeah, it's uh, going out of print. Um, it's kind of in print limbo at the moment. Um, on Amazon it says it's... Um, not, it doesn't even say it's currently unavailable, it just says not in stock but will uh, deliver when available. Uh, but all the other um, sellers are selling them for like stupid prices. Luckily I got this at retail price, so yeah, that was that. Um, next thing I've got, that's, uh, but the hard book, hardcover of Uzumaki got released, Junji Ito. It's quite similar to Mobile Suit Gundam in its, like, the feel of it. It's kind of got like a soft feel to it, um, it's like glossy finish, like on the words. Um, Absolutely beautiful book, as you can see. Um, yep, Ozmaki. Uh, next, I've got volume two of uh, Message to Adolf. Um, oops. Yep, another beautiful vertical release. Um, similar, same in trim size to Ayako. Um, so it's pretty big, pretty thick. Um, yeah, that's that. I'm running out of space. Uh, the last thing, last but not least, um, this is. Uh, I'm not sure who this is released by, um, but yeah, it's, um, The Strange Tale of Panorama Island, um, just looks very interesting, um, not sure exactly what it's about, but the book is absolutely beautiful, it's in hardcover, um, as you can see the spine, very nice, just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork, let's get this in focus, um, I will definitely do a review on this once I've finished it, because it's just, it just looks stunning. By the looks of it, it's been flopped um, to accommodate Western readers, so it's more pandering to the graphic novel audience, I guess. But yeah, it's a manga all the same. And that is it for my pickups Christmas haul. Um, not going to be buying anything really till the New Year's. Um, 
so yeah, that is Arch Archangel Manga signing out. One last thing as well, um, I also got volume 5 of Flowers of Evil, forgot to put that in there, uh, yeah, so there we go.